Hi, I'm Maggie. Thank you for stopping by Crafts the Charm today. You are very welcome here. And today we're going to finish our llama side table craft. I'm very nervous about it because I've already put so much work into the llamas, but the quality of the finish will really determine how well the craft comes out. So let's go have some fun. So I'm going to start with the straw braid llama, but if you're more interested in the other llama, I've put chapters in this video so you can jump to the other llama if you want to. This is the second llama that I made. It's the smaller llama. And you can see that I did fill in some of the gaps in the foam with some paper mache. That's the brown spots because there was cardboard in the paper mache that I made to fill in. And you can see that I've covered the legs with some plastic bags, which I've taped around the legs. And I'm going to spray paint the llama because the straw braid that I'm going to put over the llama has some gaps in it. And I want this to be as uniform a color as possible. I had two cans of spray paint which were both sort of running out, so I just used up the spray paint on the llama and tried to get as much as I could, especially the nose and the ears, which are brown, they're cardboard color. And so I spray painted as much of the llama as I could as my first step. Now originally I had intended to try to fill in the llama with plastic bags and then cover that with gauze bandage and I had already purchased the gauze bandage and I thought that I would use that on this llama because it really does need to be fairly smooth and I thought that this would also give me a nice uniform color. So what I have here is just some packages of gauze bandage. It's called rolled gauze. Um, each of the bandages is two and a half yards and I will end up using a little over two of these bandages and I got these at Walmart I want to say it was under ten dollars for five of these bandages I just looked for the best price so what I'm going to do is decoupage this onto the llama so I am just using white glue mixed with some water and uh, just mix that up and then soak the bandage in that and of course it's nice and stretchy so I just got as much of the glue and water out of it as I could and then put it over the llama stretched it over the llama and just tried to make it as smooth as I could and I covered the entire llama except for the shelf and the ears with that Now once covered, we can turn to the braided straw that we're going to use. So what I have is these hats from the Dollar Tree. And I've used these once before. I used them when I made the Mickey Mouse Scarecrow. The hat was too large for Mickey, so I took it apart and remade it as a smaller hat. So we're going to do a similar thing here. We're going to take the hats apart. Now I would say to cover this llama, I really needed three hats. What I had was two hats. I had a little bit, maybe about half a hat's worth of straw left over from my Mickey hat, and I did end up having to take the hat off of Mickey and take it apart to get a little bit more straw. I did have straw left over, but I was really afraid I wouldn't have enough, and I wasn't that happy with the hat that I made for Mickey, so I can always remake that when these hats come back to Dollar Tree. They're not there right now. I think it's a spring and summer item. Now, the hat itself, like each of those braids itself, is put together with like a clear um, sort of plastic thread, but they're also connected to each other with a clear plastic thread. So all you need to do is sort of find that beginning and find that first bit of thread, and then you can just basically pull the hat apart. And once you've pulled it apart, then you're going to want to pull that plastic thread off that was sewing the hat together. And then you'll have these nice clean pieces of um, braided straw. Now there might be one place like where the brim met the crown where a little bit of hot glue was used. You can sort of warm that up, maybe press it against a coffee cup or warm it up with a hair dryer and peel that glue off pretty easily. One thing I did was I left the center of the hat intact for one hat because I'm going to put that over the llama's nose and I thought rather than me trying to figure out how to get that nice and round, I would just take advantage of the fact that that had already been put together nice and round for me. 
Now, because I am very nervous about not having enough of this straw, I'm not going to put it on the very bottom of the llama, which you basically will not be able to see. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a piece of muslin, which is sort of an off-white, basically the same color, and cutting that so that it will fit over the legs and just sort of around the bottom of the llama and I'm going to glue that on. So I will put my straw braid around part of it, but part of it would be visible if you were to turn the llama over. And now to cover up those parts where I had to just cut little slots in the muslin to get it to go over the legs, I'm going to do just a little bit of straw braid around the bottom of the muslin and the top basically of the leg where the leg joins the llama. So I'm just using white glue and I'm just going to wrap that around each leg. And you'll see here that I didn't go um, very low onto the muslin. Once I had finished with the braid and I knew I had enough, I went back and did a little bit more around the bottom of the legs just to cover up really every part where that muslin meets the leg. Now my strategy for covering the llama with this braided straw is to cover any part that might have another part meet and go over it. So that means I'm going to do the ears before I do the head around the ears. And I'm going to do the back of the head before I do the front of the face and the neck. So you'll see the order that I do this in here. And then the way that I do it, it's pretty simple. I'm just using white glue, so I'm putting a bead of white glue on the straw and then using my finger to make sure it's covering the entire piece of the back of the straw and then just laying it down on the llama. And I'm using just straight pins to hold it in place. And my advice would be to do this slowly and use as many pins as you need to to get it to lie as flat as you want. So maybe do a few rounds of the braided straw, pin it really well, let that dry. It really doesn't take that long, I would say maybe an hour for it to dry well enough that you can pull the pins out. And then you can sort of use your llama as a pin cushion. Now as you're doing your next few rows, pull the pins out where you had them before and put them in in the new location. So I did start with the bottom of the llama and at the back of the llama I did have to fold the braid over a little bit to get it to move around smoothly. So I just glued it really well and pinned it really well at the back there. And then I just worked my way up and um, got it up to near the neck. So once we have most of the body done, I need to be a little bit more strategic in how I place the straw. So I started with the ears. And I wish I could have come up with a cool way to do the ear, like maybe where it looked sort of like braided wheat, but I, I couldn't come up with a really neat pattern for the ears, so basically I just wrapped it around the ears. And I went just down onto the head a little bit, as you can see there. Now, if there's a place where I can't pin, such as on the ears because they're cardboard, well, I just um, used a little bit of painter's tape. And then I put a little piece in the middle in between the ears. Now that I've done that, I can start doing the face. So I figured out the right size for the center of the hat that I had left over and then just put that on as his nose and wrapped around his face. Now I'm not going to go all the way up the face. Um, now I have to do the back of the head because the back of the head I'm going to do as individual pieces. Now I did consider doing a circle in the back of the head as well and working around that, but I thought that it would look more consistent with the rest of the llama if I did it more as straight pieces that went basically across the back of the head. I think that will match up better with the neck. And you can see, yes, um, as it curves, there are places where I need to overlap it a tiny bit. And once I had that done, I was able to finish the face. 
And this is because the back of the head pieces came around to the front to the face a little bit so that when I finished wrapping around the face, I could overlap those pieces that were from the back of the head. And now you'll also notice there are some pieces that come down onto the neck. Now I can finish the body and start wrapping up the neck and we'll cover up the ends of those pieces. So I just went around the llama and there were a few places where the body and the neck meet where I had to put in a few little pieces to um, you know, fill in gaps, but then basically just wrapped around the llama's neck. And then, as I mentioned before, I did have enough left over that I could do a little bit more around the bottom of the legs on the underneath. And you can see here how much of the braid I have left over. It isn't quite enough to do the bottom. I do like to have a little bit of leftover in case the llama has an accident and needs a repair. This way we have the matching straw braid that we can use to repair the llama. Now we're going to Put that llama on hold because the way I finish the two llamas overlaps when we get to building the table part of the llama. So now we're going to move on to the furry llama. Now I'm quite nervous about the fur llama. That is because upholstery is my weakest sewing skill in a repertoire of already weak sewing skills. So I probably took more steps to build a pattern for this than I needed to, but this is the process that I followed. I began by covering the llama in plastic bags, so I just fitted them to the llama and taped them because I thought this way I could figure out where I wanted the seams to be and I could also have the beginnings of a pattern. So once I had done that, I took a sharpie and I basically marked again where I thought the seams were going to be on the llama. Now for the face, you saw the thumbnail. The face is going to be a different fabric from most of the rest of the llama, the face and ears. So I do have a seam near the ears where the two fabrics are going to meet. And um, I thought that I would have, I think it's called a gusset, at the bottom of the llama. Um, when I've sewed stuffed animals in the past, uh, sometimes like a stuffed horse, they've had a piece like that and that seemed to make sense. And it's hard to figure out where the seams are going to go so they'll look okay, but I figured a seam down the middle, basically splitting the llama into a right side and a left side made sense. So then I just cut that plastic off of the llama and tried to trace those pieces onto a large sheet of paper. And for the face, even though my llama isn't completely symmetrical, I wanted to make a symmetrical pattern. So I measured the face pieces and then I just got out a piece of software called Visio, which allows me to draw lines that are um, that I can measure. And I drew that in Visio and then sort of compared it to my pieces and, and cut out the pattern from that. And it did give me a nice symmetrical um, pattern. I also did the same with the gusset, not in Visio, but after I had traced my gusset, I then made it symmetrical uh, against itself. So then I cut those pieces out of newspaper because I thought newspaper would be more forgiving than my drawing paper and it would allow me to keep my original pattern if I wanted to. And then I fitted the newspaper pieces to the llama and this allowed me to make adjustments. But I am not done with the pattern yet. I then took the newspaper pieces and traced them onto muslin fabric. I do have a lot of muslin fabric and I do generally use it for patterns and um, you know, gave it a little seam allowance. And then I pinned all of the muslin pieces to the llama and again made adjustments. And you can see there are some places where there are going to be darts where we will basically take a, a wedge out of the pattern and fold it so that the fabric fits better to the llama. So you can see a dart in the front 
and there are darts around the shelf in the back and down the back. So basically where the llama curves. Now I used the original pattern for the cardboard to make the pieces for the ears. I hadn't fit anything over the ears because I had that original cardboard pattern. So once I had all my pattern pieces and I was pretty satisfied with them, now it's time for me to try to cut the fabric that I purchased. And this is scary, but I have enough fabric so that if I make a mistake, it won't be the end of the world. And it turned out I, I didn't make any mistakes. I think because um, the fabric is very forgiving um, and I could just add a little stuffing if something was too big and I didn't want to make it smaller. So this first fabric um, is the fabric for the face and the ears. And I purchased both of these fabrics at Joann's. This face and ear fabric was a luxury suede. It's very thick and, uh, or faux suede, I should say. And I really liked the color. So basically I just cut the pieces out, ran them up on the machine and then fitted them to the llama. Now, the other fabric is going to be this gorgeous fleece. This is a Sherpa fleece. I believe the color is ivory. And I had used this previously on a wreath. I had originally bought it to make pillow covers for a friend. Now here are all the pieces laid out on my cutting board. And the piece on the left is the gusset, so you only need one of those. The two pieces next to it are the face pieces, so those would be cut out of a different fabric. And then, um, oh, the ear, you can see over on the right, that would also be cut out of the other fabric, the suede fabric. The other three pieces, you would need to cut two of them, so you would fold the fabric over. So I laid this out so you would have a general idea of how much fabric you need for the llama. So you can see this is 36 inches by 24 inches. The Sherpa fleece is 58 inches long. So a yard of Sherpa fleece is going to be plenty for this llama, and you'll have some left over. So uh, it was just a matter of cutting these pieces out, but I do want to show you the order in which I put them on the llama and which pieces I could sew by machine and which pieces I chose to hand sew. So I began with the front, his sort of, I know it looks like he's wearing pajamas. So I did pin it all to the llama, and so of course the, the seams are reversed, but then I took it down to my machine and just pinned it the other direction so I could sew the seams. So I sewed down that front seam on my sewing machine and at the top of it. And I sewed seams um, around his face. I'm not sure if I would have done that if I were doing it again. And I'm not going to make you watch me sew everything, I just want to tell you the order of how I put it together. So I did that front piece. You can see I have not sewed that to the sort of the back of the head pieces. Then I decided to sew the back piece of the llama. And that's going to have, as I said, that's going to have some darts in it around the shelf and down the sides. But I sewed that because I wanted to have something that I could sew to the front to, to get that size correct before I do the gusset and before I do the back of the head. So once I had that, I could join together where the back of the head meets that front piece where it meets the side piece and where the side piece meets the front piece. So I just wanted to get those all fitted together. And that I sewed by hand on the llama, which really wasn't that difficult and I felt was very nice for getting a good fit on the llama. Now, if this weren't this nice fleecy fabric, no, I would not be able to do this very well because um, this fabric is super forgiving. You can't see my stitches and my stitches don't have to be super neat. And once that was all fitted together, then I only had to do the underneath. But again, I want to do pieces that go under other pieces first. And so that means if I want to do anything down his little legs, I need to do it now. And I had originally thought of maybe doing a combination of that faux suede and the fleece. And I did make up a little leg in faux suede and fleece, and it just did not look good. It didn't look right at all. So I ended up just making some little fleece legs for him. So basically just gave them a little hem and then sewed them up on the sewing machine and turned them inside out. I mean, I'm doing one by hand here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, but then just put them on the legs with the seams facing towards the middle of the llama so they would be less visible. And so with those on the llama, now I can finish off the bottom of the llama. And I did all this by hand. It did take some time, 
but um, that's partly because I was using a tiny little needle because my sharpest needle is very tiny. Um, but yeah, basically just um, sewed that all together and sewed it to the little legs and that's all the fleecy part of it done. And then I just did the very top of the llama around the ears. So I sewed that fleece to the ears and sewed it around his face. Before I did that, I did put a little bit of fiber fill in the face um, just to fill out that chin part. I didn't want to make the um, faux suede tighter. I just didn't think it would look good. So I filled it out with a little bit of fiber fill. And now we're to the top of the table for our little llamas. Now I bought this lovely piece of poplar at Lowe's and this was $10. They did have less expensive wood that was stain grade, but I liked this because it didn't have a lot of knots in it. And I created a template for what I want the shelf to look like. And I used a compass so that that curve at the back is the same as the curve around the neck. And I just kept fitting it to the llama until I had a template where I liked the shape. Now I want to say I was very nervous about this woodworking because I'm not very good with my handheld scrolling saw. I find it very frustrating to use and I don't have good clamps and well there's lots of excuses. But originally I thought I'm just going to put like a cutting board on the back of the llama. Um, and so I would say if you don't like woodworking but you've come this far with me um, that you could look for a cutting board or another piece of wood that's about the right size to put on the back of the llama. There are small cutting boards at Ikea, um, supposedly at the Dollar Tree, but I haven't seen a, a small wooden cutting board at the Dollar Tree. Sometimes Target has them in the dollar spot. Family Dollar has them. So I did look around a lot for cutting boards. I just didn't like the way they looked so much. So I thought, well, I'm going to try to do this. So um, I went into Lowe's before work one morning and found this lovely piece of wood. So. I'm going to do the first shelf. This is for the fluffy llama. Now the other llama is for a young couple who are super crafty and um, the young man in the couple is better at woodworking than I am. So I gave the other shelf to him to cut for their llama, but I'm going to show you me cutting my shelf in my creepy basement um, using my handheld scrolling saw, trying to get the clamping right. Um, I did get it cut and then I sanded it with my mouse sander and this is an 80 grit sandpaper and I did give it a little sort of beveled edge with the sanding. Now poplar is pretty soft so this was not difficult to do at all. Uh, but then I did take some footage of my friend in the workshop, his workshop, um, cutting his shelf and he cut his shelf just a little bit more narrow because the braided straw llama is a little bit smaller than the fluffy llama. And doesn't he have the coolest tools? And he said I could use them too, which was very nice. All right, so here are the two shelves and I have paint left over from when I did the legs. So this is the burnt umber with a little tiny bit of black mixed in. Mix that with water to make more of a stain. So I did stain, stain them on both sides and the underneath. And then to finish them, I just did two coats of Mod Podge. This is the matte Mod Podge, but again, did not completely finish the underside because I'm going to glue them to that Dollar Tree shelf that is the top of the llama. So I didn't want to glue Mod Podge, I wanted to glue the wood. I didn't think the paint would interfere with the wood so much. Now with my llama, which is the furry llama, I have these pieces of yardstick, paint stir yardstick left over from some of my Christmas crafts, the box that I made for the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad tree. And I saved the little bits and that's perfect because I really needed some shims because the, the fur is so high, I wasn't able to get the shelf to adhere to um, the shelf that is part of the llama. So I put these, um, and again, these are the yardstick ones, so they're a little thicker than the one foot paint stir sticks. And then I just glued the shelf to that and I don't have good clamps, so I just tied some rope around it to clamp that down. Now we're going to finish my llama. I have four strands of yarn from the Dollar Tree and the color is pecan. And I just saturated them with glue and just twisted them together to make some thicker yarn. And I'm just going to cut that into like closed eyes for my llama. I spent some time trying to get them symmetrical, but they're not perfectly symmetrical.
Now, to decorate my llama, I wanted to give him some tassels, and if you saw my wreath video, you probably recognize this leather trim, which I got at Joann's, and these tassels, which I made because the, I always intended for this to be for the llama, but I thought it would look really cool on a wreath as well. So now it's time for the llama to get this leather, sort of a rain, I guess, and tassels. And I will show you how to make tassels when I do the other llama because the other llama is going to get some tassels as well, although we're going to decorate that llama a little differently. So I could have glued this to the llama. I did just use white glue to glue the little eyes on, but white glue will stain this fabric, so um, I didn't want to do that. So what I did was I pinned it on and then I just did a few little stitches um, to hold it in place where I wanted it held in place. And then I just cut that um, leather piece where it goes under the shelf and just pinned it there and I thought this would be great to change out for different seasons so we could put different colored tassels so if we're feeling very festive in the spring we can put some brightly colored tassels maybe in some pastel colors or some bright colors um, at the holidays we can do different colored tassels so if I just pin that under the shelf then I can unpin it slide those tassels off and put new tassels on now for the second llama, what I thought is I would give it a sort of saddle blanket and I have this gorgeous fabric which is from the Dollar Tree and these fabric squares I think are 18 by 21 inches, so not really squares, and whenever I see one that's in a beautiful pattern or color I just pick it up and this is one that I happen to have. Now, I did put some Velcro there. I was originally thinking that we would Velcro this on, but um, in the end I ended up just pinning this too. Either way, we want this to be interchangeable too, so that we can change out this llama's decor for the seasons. So I measured um, eight by eight inch squares, which is a little, a little larger than I needed. And then I just um, ironed down some seams and then just uh, ran that up on the sewing machine. So sewed those seams. I didn't have an orange color, so I used brown. And then I did uh, a blanket stitch along the bottom in this beautiful turquoise yarn, which is also from the Dollar Tree. Um, I do have a two minute technique on doing the blanket stitch, so I'll link that here. I held this against the llama and folded up the bottom to the length that I wanted and then did the blanket stitch. And then I made some tassels. So for these, I wrapped 15 times, I wanted these to be small, so 15 times around three fingers and then I wrapped a contrasting color around and I ended up tying them to the back. And I did three that were the turquoise color with that sort of terracotta wrapped around. And I did two that were this brown, the pecan, with the turquoise wrapped around. And all of these yarns are from the Dollar Tree. And then again, I just pinned those under the llama. Now, for the eyes, this is one of those Dollar Tree bags, faux leather bags, and that pocketbook is from a video I haven't made public yet, not sure if I'm going to. I made, I've made i made some pocketbooks out of these bags, that's a no-sew pocketbook, and um, I'm going to repurpose it. So these are 15 millimeter circles I'm cutting out for this llama's eyes, and I just glued those to the llama. And you may have noticed from the thumbnail for this video that I gave the llama a little bit of decor for his ears as well. And so what I did was I took one and a half inch strips of the fabric, which were just the length of the fabric, but I don't think the length is really important. They were actually a little bit long. And um, I did sew a hem on them on three sides. And then on the fourth side, I did a gathering stitch and pulled it tight so that I got that um, sort of fan or accordion sort of effect. And then I made just sort of a little bit of a flower out of the turquoise yarn. And I just pinned those to the llama in front of the ears because I thought those could be changed out for different seasons too or removed entirely, you know, if you don't like them. And so here are the two llamas and I'm very pleased with how they came out. I was very nervous about making them. I was even more nervous about trying to finish them, but I think that in the end they came out okay. So, what did you think of our finished llamas? I won't ask if you had a favorite because we don't play favorites here, but if you were going to make one, which style would you make? 
or if you have an idea for a different way to finish the llama, I would really love to hear about it in the comments. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this sort of content, please subscribe to Crafts the Charm. Thank you for spending time with me today. Take care.